It is Friday, May 31st, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday crossword. That means we're going to be solving the first of two themeless puzzles for the week. Might be a little bit tricky, might have some misdirection. Uh, let's find out. And this potentially misdirecting, tricky, themeless edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by a new benefactor, Seth Wilson. So welcome to Seth Wilson. Thank you for joining the Patreon campaign as a benefactor, which means you will uh, in time receive the Let's Check the Crosses official mug of the Daily Solve. So look forward to that. And thank you uh, for supporting the channel um, at that level. I really do appreciate it. So thank you to Seth, Seth Wilson. Welcome to him. And thanks, of course, as always, to the indomitable Showmaster and the incorrigible Sheeler Beeler. Uh, those three are benefactors. They do support the channel, and I'm very grateful to them and to everybody else who backs the Patreon campaign at any level. If you'd like to do so yourself, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the description field link, and you'll find those bonus videos and for those three and other benefactors, the official Let's Check the Crosses mug. So thank you so much to them. Thanks as well if you've subscribed to the channel on YouTube, which is also quite a big help. And uh, let's just get right on to the, <laughs> to the crossword solve. Why not? Um, so this is, as I said, a Friday crossword. Uh, it's a themeless puzzle. Might have some, some punniness, some misdirection. Who knows? It's a debut construction by Aiden DeShong. So welcome, uh, welcome to him, to the New York Times crossword. And it was edited once again by Joel Faliano. So let's start solving. See how I get on today with this Friday crossword. One might read, select all images with bicycles, right? Okay. I wonder if this has been in the crossword before. It probably has. Uh, this is a CAPTCHA. This is that that process that we all we all perform in order to uh, get to the website we're trying to visit to prove we're not <laughs> to prove we're not a computer. Although I don't know how much longer that's going to be effective. I'm sure that the CAPTCHA developers are hard at work outsmarting AI. Anyway, they might be lost. Lost Causes, maybe. Uh, titular Elementary School on TV. I don't know. Could be from anything, really. Titular Elementary, yeah, I don't know. Go for. To go for something. To pick it? To pick on? Doesn't really work. Dessert that rarely lives up to its name. I don't know. Don't know what that is. Boxer's target. Chin? Or boxer the, the dog breed, maybe? Don't know. Not not sure what we're not sure which boxer we mean there. Reason to turn on headlights. Reason to turn on headlights. The time of day or boy, I'm not I'm not doing very well, am I? Oi, what a I mean, I'm wondering if the oi means this is going to be Yiddish or Yiddish inflected, but I don't know what the answer is yet. Name meaning, meaning father of many. Uh, this is probably Abraham, you know, who's sort of traced uh, as the, you know, sort of the root of the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, um, and you know, it's the, the father of many in the sort of uh, scriptural, scriptural lineage. Uh, titch, but let's, so let's see if that helps with this. Titular elementary school and TV. Yeah, okay. I don't think I'm going to have a guess about that one for a while. Go for. So go for could be pick or choose. It could be go for as in to go for it, to try, to strive. Don't think that's right. To go for, to Go for a job, maybe, to apply to a job. I just don't know. Dessert. Oh, tart. Oh, right. Okay. Yes, a tart is not, I mean, it could be, but would not necessarily actually have a tart sort of sour flavor. I think that's what that's about. Okay, good. Boxer's target. Okay, maybe it is a chin. Right, okay. That was my first guess, and I think it might be right with that CH. Reason to turn on headlights. Oh, haze, a hazy hazy environment, you know, environment maybe in, in, in the evening. So disrupt with, let's see if that works. Disrupt with technology as an existing industry. What well, looks like something, uh, oh, 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 Uberize. Wow, weird. 
That, I bet, is new to the crossword. So this, I think, refers to the practice of uh, dubbing some new tech idea the Uber of whatever, the Uber of groceries, which I guess is now also Uber, the, um, you know, the Uber, I don't even know, the Uber of uh, ice cream. Uh, anyway, titular element. I, I think that's. I think that's what that is. That's what a funny thing to have in the crossword. Um, but I've certainly heard that of, of that phenomenon in general terms. Lack of an edge, bluntness, or somethingness, sweetness. No. Oh, this looks like a mess. Oi, what a mess. Oh, okay. So the oi is just there for tone rather than uh, to imply any sort of Yiddish vocabulary. I, I suppose. Okay, but that sounds perfectly reasonable. One blank, one sec, you might say. Hold on a moment. Let's see if that works. Like many opera lovers. Um, not sure what that specifically is referring to. Angels we have heard on high, e.g. That's a Christmas carol. So there we go. It ends in September. So this is this is um, uh, September in French. Uh, you can tell because of the, um, well, actually for two reasons. One, uh, it's R-E rather than E-R at the end, but also it's not capitalized. So in, in French, there are fewer, uh, fewer nouns are capitalized than in English and uh, month names are not. So anyway, summer in French would be été. So there we go. We can uh, spell summer in French as suggested by the clue titular elementary school and TV. I mean, it looks like Abbott or Abbott's maybe. It's probably, probably one of those. Oh, softness. Lack of an edge is softness. Why? Yes, it's not a sharp edge. It's soft. I don't know why that didn't occur to me. Okay. To go for something is to prefer it. Okay. It is to choose. And I just didn't think of the answer. That's silly. Things on a golf bag. Well, this, this must be a T then, not an S. Things on a golf bag are straps, I suppose. Seems plausible. So this is Abbott Elementary. I don't know what that's... Um, I don't know the show being referenced there. Multinational supermarket chain based in Germany. Uh, Aldi is a um, uh, one of the sort of German budget supermarket chains, and they're, they're all over the place here in the UK. Okay. Rings. Peels, maybe? Uh, a bell rings or peels or tolls, but in this case, it starts with a P. I think that's probably right. It might raise a flap. Not sure. Throat ailment. Strep, strep throat. So, oh, letter might raise a flap. Letter raise a f Oh, oh. Uh, letter carrier? No, but that wouldn't be it. That would be a person. A letter box or something? I'm wondering if it means a flap on a door through which the post is is pushed. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think it's something to do with that, but I can't think what the answer is. Beat. And like many opera lovers, only NFL team to win championships while representing three different cities. Well, that's interesting, and I definitely don't know the answer. But it probably ends with an S. The team is the somethings. What this forward slash can mean? Slash, I guess? I don't know. That doesn't seem right. That's what it is, not what it can mean. Yeah, don't know. Went flying. If one went flying, one sped. So to fly can mean, obviously, to soar in the air, but it can also mean just to move very quickly. Heads up in a review. Heads up in a review. Flags? No, that would be plural. Don't know. Designer of Dallas's Meyerson Symphony Center. Okay, if I had to guess, I would guess the official uh, architect of the New York Times crossword, who's I am Pei. Um, I don't know this building specifically, but I, but I, it's just the most likely. It's the most likely answer. Let's see if we can get anything from that, just in case it's right. Built-in Windows application with a palette logo familiarly. All right, MS Paint. Microsoft Paint, the drawing application that's been shipping with Microsoft Windows for decades now. Opening. Aperture, maybe? 
an aperture as an opening. Yeah, that fits. Let's see if it works. Um, clementine look. Oh, mandarin oranges, clementine. So uh, clementines are, you know, related to oranges. And here we have one variety, mandarin oranges. Whoops, I misspelled that. There we go. Uh, pretty sure that's right. No, uh No, I something. Heads up in a review. Oh, spoil. Spoiler alert. Right. Oh, okay. A, re a film review. For some reason, that wasn't the meaning of review I had in mind. I don't know why. Um, I was thinking of someone sort of reviewing something with another person. I don't know why. But anyway, spoiler alert might be a phrase you have to give you a heads up that uh, information you might not wish to know is going to be divulged. Nuh -uh. No, I didn't, maybe. Pricey oils, e.g. art, as in oil paintings. Expensive oil paintings, art. That's probably right. No, I... No, it isn't. Yeah, that'll be it. Curious. Hmm. I guess this could be something like, no, it won't, or no, it can't. I suppose I don't really have any way to know that it's, no, it isn't. But it all of those end with NT. Oh, no, although this doesn't... Oh, no, this rules that out. Ticket issuer. Oh, never mind. Okay. Well, forget everything I've just said. Curious. It's odd, maybe? Oh, no, it's not. That's what it is. That's what it is. No, it's not. I've, I've always found it sort of interesting that we have no, it isn't, and no, it's not. And those are contracting precisely the same words. And yet we have two different equally accepted ways to do that in English. I don't know if that's strange. Maybe that kind of thing is common in other languages as well, but it's always, I've always, there aren't very many cases of that in English, certainly, where you could contract the exact same phrase in two completely different ways. Uh, I'm not saying there isn't a tonal difference between them, but in terms of the, the strict meaning, they, they are the same. Sisters are a part of it, a nunnery. So you could have sisters in a religious order and be members of a nunnery or, you know, a convent. I know, I know. On it? Or doesn't really mean I know. It means I'm doing it. I know. Oh, no, I see what it's saying. It's not saying I know as in I'm aware of this information. It's saying I know I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm doing it already. I know, I know, I'm on it. Okay, that's what it is. Uh, okay, sick. Don't know. I don't know why I'm not saying that. Ticket is sure. And active type, active hospital staffers. Is this not nunnery? Hospital staffers. This this line is strange. I don't. It's I can't think of what the answers are. They'll knock you. Oh, maybe this is wrong. This isn't on it. They'll knock you out. Ethers, you know, it's a sort of anesthetic, um, especially I think associated with. Um, Anesthetic prior to, uh, you know, our our current modern era. I know, I know. Okay, there's I'm, I'm missing something about about this area down here. I think I think I must have something wrong. This must not be nunnery. This this feels like the line that's that's throwing everything off. I know, I know. Oh no, it's the it is the first one I thought. It is. I know. I'm aware of this information. It's, oh, oh, it's you're sort of raising your hand in, in probably a classroom setting or something saying, I know, I know, oh, oh, it's me. You know, I, I can answer. So nunhood, I guess. Right. Okay. So sisters are part of a nunhood. So it's not, it's not the, the sort of nunnery itself in the sense of the structure or complex. It's the order. Okay. Well, there we go. So sick, um, dope. So in the sense of sort of 80s or 90s slang, that's totally, I guess I guess people still say sick and dope, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, I think of them as being slightly older slang, but I guess they're still around. Anyway, positive, you know, positive adjective. Okay, active type. Active type. A doer, someone who does things. Okay, that's straightforward. And a ticket issuer, I see a trooper as someone who's sort of patrolling patrolling highways, issuing tickets. 
in the U.S., this would be maybe a state trooper. And then hospital staffers are doctors. That's straightforward. Yeah, so it really was nunnery nunhood that that threw me off there. Okay, beat. If you're beat, you're tired. That's it. Straightforward. Wet blanket. Wet blanket question mark. Do a wet blanket over the, you know, the grass maybe in the mornings. Uh, this looks like serenade something. Like many, like many opera, opera lovers. Serenaded? Because they're being serenaded while viewing an opera. I mean, there might be a way to read this that I'm that I'm missing. I mean, I feel even if you, like many opera lovers, serenade. I don't quite understand it. I guess it just means because they love opera, they choose to go to the opera more frequently. I guess I guess that's just what it means, and therefore they're going to be serenaded in that context. I guess that's what that means. I'm not quite sure I understand how to read that properly, but I think that's the answer. Female flying group in World War II. The Women's Auxiliary or, or something like that. What is this? Uh, that's probably not what it was. Because would the auxiliary themselves have been flying? I don't, I don't know. I, I can't remember this. I mean, I'm broadly aware of this. Uh, sort of historical phenomenon, but I can't I can't think of the the name anyway. Only NFL team to oh right oh Rams I guess that's an NFL team that I've I've heard of at least so that that must be it. Prized mushroom, uh, morel mushroom that's a kind of mushroom. It might raise a a letter opener. Okay, that's it's funny. It was something to do with the post, you know, getting a letter in the in the post or the mail, but it wasn't uh, being pushed through a mail slot. It's uh, Well, again, I don't quite know how to read this one either, because if you use a letter opener to open a letter, you don't actually raise the flap. The flap stays exactly where it is. You sort of cut through the flap, but you actually don't raise it. You'd raise a flap if you sort of ripped the adhesive off or if you steamed it open or something. I mean, I get, I get the pun, obviously, but... Again, there might be a better way to, to read or interpret this. So do, do let me know in the comments if I'm if I'm missing the, the sort of better parsing of that pun. Uh, so here we have what slash can mean. Oh, right. Okay. A spare in bowling. Yeah, I don't I don't really go bowling ever. So this didn't occur to me, but I, I am familiar with that um, sort of iconography. Okay. Musical originally released as a French concept album for short. Oh, it must be Les Mis. Okay, I didn't know that. That's really, really interesting. I didn't know that. I'll have to look. That, I'll have to look that up. I wasn't aware that that was released as an album first. Um, Hades Town, a musical, which I saw here in London a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, was released as a concept album, not before its very, very first uh, dramatic performance, but before its kind of major run that ended up going to Broadway and, you know, has continued on to now, but it was released as a concept album years and years and years, I think maybe 15 years ago or so. Or so. Anyway, uh, Tolkien creatures are Ents. Oh, right. Tolkien creatures. These are the tree creatures, Ents. Okay. Certain padded container. I'm not sure what that is offhand. Segment of a game of horseshoes. An inning? Do you, do you call that an inning in horseshoes? I actually don't know. I'm just... It's a segment, it's a way that a game can be <laughs> divided and it starts with an I and it fits in six letters. So I'm thinking it's probably the answer. Itty bitty skitterer, an ant maybe? Seems plausible. Certain padded container. Still not sure. Good at the game operation, perhaps. You're steady. So that, that's that game in which you manipulate a, I don't know, sort of generic medical tool, I guess. And there's... You're, com you're completing a, a circuit and trying not to, uh, well, I guess you're trying to avoid completing a circuit as you perform an operation on a model of a human body. Search through a trove of digital information to data mine. Yep, that's what it is. To excavate data to find conclusions or visualize it or something. 
certain padded container is a mailer, right? Okay, yes. So a padded mailer is an envelope with some form of you know, foam or bubble wrap padding in it to protect its contents. Okay, uh, the Horn of the Horn of Africa, Somalia. There we go. Uh, female flying group in World War II. Oh, oh, wasps. I definitely know this phrase. I wish I could remember the how, the full unpacking of the acronym, which which obviously starts with women's or women, but women's, I assume. Uh, yeah, that's definitely right. I'm sure. I'm sure that's right. Start of a hypothetical. Pretend. Pretend this hypothetically. And a loyalist during the American Revolution would be a Tory. There we go. So referring to one loyal to the British crown. Um, and that, that term's um, still used to, des to describe members of the Conservative Party here in the UK. Uh, so true would be amen. Yeah, that's straightforward. Don't know why that took me a second. <laughs> Pub pal would be your mate. So again, um, referring to um, British, well, I, I don't know what to say again, but in this case, referring to British slang. I mean, obviously this isn't unique to British English, but it is more associated with British English mate, just as pub as a phrase is more associated with British English as opposed to say bar. Um, so there we go. And then what do we have here? What might, what might cause one plus one to be greater than two? Synergy. I see. So it just, it means in a, in a metaphorical sense, uh, two people say combined are able to achieve more than they, more than the sort of sum of their individual efforts. Okay. Seething feeling it might be ire, anger. You might be seething with, with ire. When repeated in formal term for supper, I think din din people might use to refer to dinner. Um, certainly heard that. Hankering slangily would be hankering. Uh, I mean, a jonesing maybe? Well, that wouldn't work with this. I think this is probably din. You betcha. Yes siree. Yeah, okay. So they're just meaning absolutely, you betcha. One's dealing with joint inflammation, question mark. One's dealing with, so I assume this doesn't refer to inflammation of your joints in anatomical sense. I assume it means something else, maybe lighting a joint, you know, in, in the cigarette sense. Um, stoners, yes, it, that is what it means. They're literally inflaming or lighting a marijuana cigarette, a joint. There we go. Okay, babies snap out of them. Trances? No, onesies maybe, because they snap shut and it's a form of clothing associated with babies. Okay, Mars, but not Venus. A god, no. Venus is a goddess, maybe that's what, maybe that's what it means. Hmm. Not sure. Make more fun and addictive in a way. Gamify, it's a process used that people often use to try to apply to things that in many cases probably have no business being games. Uh, but the person in charge is attempting to make them more fun and addictive, sometimes successfully. So this does look like God. I think that's what that's getting at. I think that's I, it's basically getting at that you'd refer to Venus as a goddess. I think that's what that's that's doing. Okay, genealogist's tool. A DNA test would be used to determine genealogy. And then the Tempest King is... Oh, how do I not remember this? Uh, let's see. Blank Holmes, uh, founder of the website Jezebel. I mean, it's obviously Anne or Anna. Or, and I, I was going to say it could be Annie, but I've never really seen Annie spelled that way. The Tempest King. Let's see. What about this? Fast break, question mark. I know. Oh, 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 oh. As in breaking the fast. So eating, uh, having a meal. You, you're, you're stopping fasting. There we go. That's what it is. Oh, um, Alonzo is the Tempest King. Before I put that in, 
let's check the crosses and see if I can just make sure that's actually right. Uh, Blank Holmes, founder of the yes, Anna Holmes, founder of the website Jezebel. That sounds right. Here, oh, here we just have a colon, which is used in analogies um, to mean is to. So A is to B as X is to Y, you know, in an analogy. Um, and the colon is the is to bit. This looks like fielding. Oh, no, I said this was Alonzo, so this would be fiending. Oh, it is. Hankering slight. Yes, okay, you could say I'm hankering for, you know, a burger right now. I'm fiending for it. There we go. That's what it is. And this is Alonzo. And I think that means everything's correct. It is. <laughs> That was the Friday crossword. There we go. Solved in, <laughs> in one second shy of 24 minutes. Um, there we go. I mean, I would say this was a this was an interesting sort of peaks and valleys solve for me in terms of, of difficulty level. I went through uh, times where I was just sort of sailing through and answering the, the clues. And then there were times where I was just really hung up. And one of them was definitely down here uh, when I misentered nunhood as nunnery, which I think was a reasonable answer, but obviously was wrong in context. And uh, that threw me off for quite a while. And then there were just sort of little moments of that. This area got difficult again up here. Um, yeah, but I think that was a good Friday puzzle. I mean, we had, we had, oh yeah, we had some nice punny clues like wet blanket for dew and uh, they'll knock you out ethers. I mean, obviously they'll knock you out. Sounds like it could mean, oh, it's just great. You'll, you'll love it. Uh, it might raise a flap letter opener. Let me know if I'm if I'm missing how to properly interpret that pun. I may well be. Um, what else? Oh, I need to look up wasps. Someone just let, or someone just let me know in the comments what uh, what this stands for. That reminds me. Speaking of comments, I meant to I meant to uh, to address this in the puzzle, and I completely in in the at the beginning of uh, I guess yesterday's recording, and I completely forgot. Um, I completely completely sailed by one of the uh one of the very obvious the primary obvious meaning of the recipe for disaster theme from recipes for disaster themes a few days ago which had um cocktails in, listed in the grid uh, as part of the theme and the thing that I did, somehow did not pick up on was that all of those cocktail names were natural disasters. They were all they were all names of disasters, and so therefore the recipes and the clue, the clues that were associated with them were recipes for disaster. I interpreted it, and I think this was intentional, but was definitely the secondary part of the theme. As well, these are recipes for disaster because they're, you know, they'll they'll go straight to your head. Um, having a few too many of these is a recipe for disaster, and I think that was probably intended, but. As several of you pointed out in the comments, the primary, <laughs> the primary element of the theme is that the names of the cocktails were indeed names of natural disasters. I com just completely, it just went right by me. This happens sometimes. Anyway, sorry, that's that's a mea culpa from a solve a few days ago. But uh, <laughs> that's that. That's the Friday puzzle as well, I suppose. Thank you for joining me uh, for this edition of the New York Times Crossword. I'll be back tomorrow for the second of two themeless puzzles for the week, the Saturday Crossword. So join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Uh -huh.